Let's review some key product information for FlexiSeal FMS. Here we'll review the indications, contraindications, warnings, and precautions from the instructions for use. FlexiSeal FMS is a temporary containment device indicated for use to manage fecal incontinence through the collection of liquid to semi-liquid stool and to provide access to administer medications. The contraindications for FlexiSeal are that 1. This product is not intended for use for more than 29 consecutive days. For pediatric patients or patients under 18 years of age, as its use has not been tested in this population. And two, the FlexiSeal fecal management system should not be used on individuals who have suspected or confirmed rectal mucosal impairment, in other words, severe proctitis, ischemic proctitis, or mucosal ulcerations, have had rectal surgery within the last year, have any rectal or anal injury, have hemorrhoids of significant size and or symptoms, have a rectal or anal stricture or stenosis, have a suspected or confirmed rectal or anal tumor, have any indwelling rectal or anal device, for example, a thermometer or delivery mechanisms, for example, suppositories or enemas in place, or are sensitive to or who have had an allergic reaction to any component within the system. The following are important warnings related to use of FlexiSeal. Clinicians should be aware that there are very limited clinical data on the use of indwelling fecal management systems after 14 days continued use. There is a potential risk of misconnections with connectors from other healthcare applications, such as intravenous equipment, breathing and driving gas systems, urethral urinary, limb cuff inflation neuraxial devices, and other enteral and gastric applications. Not following these instructions for use may increase the likelihood of an adverse event. Patients should be monitored daily for, and a physician notified immediately if any of the following occur. Rectal pain, rectal bleeding, or abdominal symptoms such as distension or pain. Overinflation of the retention balloon has the potential to increase the risk of adverse events. The following are important precautions and observations related to use of FlexiSeal. 1. Close attention should be exercised with the use of the device in patients who have inflammatory bowel conditions or who have had rectal surgery. The physician should determine the degree and location of inflammation or extent of surgery, for example, location of anastomosis, within the colon or rectum prior to considering use of this device in patients with such conditions. Two. Care should be exercised in using this device in patients who have a tendency to bleed from either anticoagulant or antiplatelet therapy or underlying disease. If signs of rectal bleeding occur, remove the device immediately and notify a physician. 3. The device should be used with caution in patients with spinal cord injury because of the possibility of the development of autonomic dysreflexia. 4. Remove any indwelling or anal device prior to insertion of the FlexiSeal FMS and do not insert any other devices into the rectum while the FlexiSeal FMS is in place. 5. Ensure that the patient does not lie or sit on the catheter, as this could lead to localized pressure damage and contribute to the development of anal skin breakdown and or restrict fecal flow. 6. Solid or soft-formed stool cannot pass through the catheter and will obstruct the opening. The use of the device is not indicated for solid or soft-formed stool. 7. Small amounts of moisture or seepage around the catheter is anticipated. To avoid skin irritation, initiate an appropriate institutional skin care protocol. At a minimum, the skin should be kept clean, dry, and protected with a moisture barrier product. Eight. If the catheter becomes blocked with feces, it can be rinsed with water using the irrigation port only. See Direction for Use, Irrigation of the Device. Do not use the white inflation port, marked less than or equal to 45 ml, to irrigate. If obstruction of the catheter is due to solid stool, use of the device should be discontinued. 9. Clinicians should take extra care to use the blue irrigation medication port only when irrigating and delivering medication. Do not irrigate or administer medication through the white inflation port, 
marked less than or equal to 45 ml. 10. Discontinue the use of the device if the patient's bowel control, consistency, and frequency of stool begin to return to normal. 11. As long as the patient is regularly and closely monitored at all times, patients may be seated for short periods, in other words, for up to two hours, as part of daily nursing care. During this period of seating, regular monitoring should be made to ensure the tubing is never blocked or kinked and to check for and avoid pressure damage to the anal perianal region. For some patients, the length of the period of seating to avoid pressure damage to the anal perianal region could be much shorter, and the clinician should be alert to this possibility. 12. As with the use of any rectal device, the following adverse events could occur. Leakage of stool around the device. Rectal or anal bleeding due to pressure necrosis ulceration of rectal or anal mucosa. Perianal skin breakdown. Temporary loss of anal sphincter muscle tone. Infection. Bowel obstruction and perforation of the bowel. 13. This device is for single use only and should not be reused. Reuse may lead to increased risk of infection or cross-contamination. Physical properties of the device may no longer be optimal for intended use. Hello, I'm Natalie Morris. I'm a registered nurse here to help you learn about a leading-edge solution from the FlexiSeal FMS family of fecal management systems, known as FlexiSeal Signal FMS. This system was designed to safely and effectively reduce the risk of skin breakdown and the spread of infection, as well as improve patient comfort. It also helps prevent fecal contamination of wounds. It is for single patient use and disposable as outlined in your facility protocol. The design minimizes the exposure to infectious waste material, such as diarrhea, which may contain pathogens, such as C. difficile and helps prevent cross-contamination. The management of fecal incontinence, a risk factor in the development of pressure ulcers and the transmission of nosocomial infections, is a priority in acute and critical care hospital settings. In a clinical study of 42 critical and acute care patients using FlexiSeal FMS, 92% of patients had their skin condition maintained or improved. Understanding how FlexiSeal Signal FMS works and how to properly use it will enable you to maximize all the benefits this system has to offer while providing safe, effective patient care. The FlexiSeal Signal FMS kit consists of a silicone catheter, a soft and flexible silicone retention balloon, a lure lock syringe labeled for 45 ml, three charcoal filter collection bags, and one cinch clamp. It comes in a recyclable, compact clamshell case that allows for easy storage. FlexiSeal Signal FMS is also entirely latex-free. The FlexiSeal Signal Fecal Management System includes the following components. 1. The Signal Indicator, which provides visual indication to help prevent overfilling, helps indicate optimal fill. 2. Soft Retention Balloon with Catheter. 3. Patented blue finger pocket for ease of insertion. 4. Charcoal filtered vented collection bags. 5. Sampling port provides access to the catheter for safe and easy stool collection. 6. Black cinch clamp for medication delivery via irrigation medication port. And 7. Labeling on the lumen marked IRRIG slash RX. We'll discuss each of these features throughout the course of this video. There is a low-pressure retention balloon at the distal end and a connector for attaching the collection bag at the other end. There is a recess under the balloon for the clinician's finger, allowing the device to be positioned digitally. FlexiSeal has odor-absorbing technology. The odor barrier runs the length of the catheter, providing an end-to-end -end odor barrier. The catheter diverts fecal waste away from the patient and facilitates the flow of stool into the collection bag in order to protect the patient's skin and keep the bedding clean. A blue and white port are attached to the side of the silicone catheter. 
The white inflation port, with less than or equal to 45 ml printed on it, is used to inflate the retention balloon with water or saline after the device has been inserted into the patient's rectum. This white inflation port also provides a visual and tactile indication as to when the low-pressure retention balloon is filled to its optimal volume. The other port, colored blue, with the letters IRRIG slash RX printed on it, can be used to flush the catheter if it becomes blocked with solid particles. It can also be used to administer medication. It is called the blue irrigation medication port. Clinicians should take extra care to use this blue irrigation medication port only when irrigating or administering medication. The soft, flexible, low-pressure balloon is designed to help reduce the risk of tissue necrosis. Once inserted and inflated to the optimal volume, as shown by the indicator, the retention balloon conforms above the sphincter anatomy on the rectal shelf to create an effective seal to minimize leakage and to safely divert and contain stool. Once in place, the drainage tube collapses to an 8 mm diameter, helping to minimize the impact on sphincter tone. FlexiSeal FMS requires minimal pressure to inflate the retention balloon. The soft, flexible retention balloon conforms to sphincter anatomy and is designed to minimize the chance of tissue necrosis. In a clinical study in which patients used FlexiSeal FMS for up to 29 days, rectal mucosa was shown to be healthy at baseline and at end follow-up endoscopy. The soft, flexible silicone catheter provides an effective diversion of stool away from the patient to minimize the risk of skin breakdown and spread of infection. In 2011, Ostomy Wound Management published an article that investigated C. difficile containment properties of FlexiSeal FMS. The study found there was no evidence of transmission of C. difficile through the FlexiSeal device over the 31-day study period, nor was spore contamination detected in the vicinity of the four devices tested, as monitored by environmental subtle plates and air counting techniques. Let's discuss what needs to be done before inserting the device. We'll review the steps involved in using FlexiSeal FMS. Please refer to the product package insert for full instructions for use. In addition to the device kit, you will need gloves, lubricating jelly, saline or water, and an incontinence pad. When removing the device from its packaging, check to see if there is any residual air in the balloon. If so, remove it by attaching the syringe provided to the inflation port, marked less than or equal to 45 ml, and withdrawing the plunger. Remove the syringe, and prior to filling with water or saline, ensure that the syringe is empty by expelling any air. Next, fill the syringe with only 45 milliliters of water or saline, and connect the syringe to the white inflation port of the catheter. Do not overfill beyond 45 milliliters. Securely attach the collection bag to the connector at the end of the catheter. The small hook on the catheter is designed to help secure the connection from the bag to the connector. Use your printed date labels to write insertion date and time. Place on the allotted space at the end of the bead strap. Position the patient in the left side lying position with the hips flexed. This position best aids in performing a digital rectal assessment. If this is not possible, you may determine an alternative position enabling access to the rectum. You should perform a digital rectal assessment to assess for the presence of fecal impaction and rectal sphincter tone. A good sphincter tone is desired to keep the retention balloon inserted and minimize leakage. If sphincter tone is absent, the device may still be inserted, but the patient may experience leakage around the device. Also be sure to remove any indwelling or anal device prior to insertion of the FlexiSeal FMS device. If fecal impaction is felt, do not insert the device and alert the ordering healthcare professional of your findings. Now we'll review how to insert the device after the patient and the device have been properly prepared. 
Remember, it's important to remove any indwelling or anal device prior to insertion of Flexi Seal. Unfold the length of the catheter to lie flat on the bed. Extend the collection bag connector towards the foot of the bed alongside the patient. The soft, low pressure balloon is designed to reduce the risk of tissue necrosis. Once inserted and inflated, the retention balloon retains the device inside the patient. It conforms to the sphincter anatomy to create an effective seal to minimize leakage and to safely divert and contain stool. In place, the drainage tube collapses to an 8 mm diameter, minimizing the impact on sphincter tone. You can locate the blue finger pocket by moving your finger along the irrigation line, starting from the blue irrigation medication port up to the balloon. The blue finger pocket is located above the position indicator line. To make it easier to insert and remove your finger from the finger pocket, you should first coat your gloved insertion finger with a lubricating jelly. Then insert your gloved insertion finger into the pocket for digital guidance. The finger pocket is located above the position indicator line. Also roll the balloon end of the catheter in lubricating jelly so that it is well coated and then smooth the jelly evenly for ease of insertion. Using the finger in the pocket of the balloon, gently insert the balloon through the anal sphincter until the balloon is beyond the external orifice and well inside the rectal vault. The finger may be removed or remain in place in the rectum during initial balloon inflation. Inflate the balloon with up to a maximum of 45 milliliters of water or saline by slowly depressing the syringe plunger. Under no circumstances should the balloon be inflated with more than 45 milliliters. With the insertion finger removed, the dome will indicate once the balloon has reached the optimal fill level for the anatomy. There may be cases where the dome will not indicate if the space in the rectum is large. Under no circumstances should the balloon be inflated with more than 45 milliliters of fluid. If the dome indicates at less than 30 milliliters of fluid, withdraw the fluid and reposition the balloon in the rectal vault. After repositioning, fill the balloon as described. Do not fill with more than 45 milliliters of fluid. Should the indicator deflate or appear excessively inflated after proper inflation, this is an indication that the retention balloon is no longer at the optimal fill level. In this case, use the syringe to withdraw the fluid from the retention balloon and re-inject until the indicator pops or 45 milliliters has been injected. Next, remove the syringe from the white inflation port and gently pull on the catheter to ensure that the balloon is properly positioned against the rectal floor. This will also ensure that the stool will flow into the catheter instead of around it. Take note of the position indicator line relative to the patient's anus. Regularly observe changes in the location of the position indicator line as a means to determine movement of the retention balloon in the patient's rectum. This may indicate the need for the balloon or device to be repositioned. In the event of expulsion of the device, deflate the balloon fully and rinse the balloon end of the catheter and reinsert following the instructions for insertion of device. A rectal exam should be conducted prior to reinsertion to verify that no stool is present. If expulsion continues for more than three episodes, discontinuation of the device should be considered. Then position the length of the flexible silicone catheter along the patient's leg, avoiding kinks and obstruction. If the patient's condition allows, reposition the patient on his back and position the catheter between the legs ensuring the patient is not lying on the catheter so there is no compression or twisting. Alternative positions should be at the clinician's discretion depending on patient need. Hang the bag by the plastic beaded strap on the bedside at a position lower than that of the patient's rectum to aid in stool flow. Here we'll review how to manage leakage issues. The catheter's 22 mm diameter is designed for free flow of stool and is capable of collapsing to a very small 8 mm diameter. This ability of the soft, flexible silicone catheter to collapse to an 8 mm diameter 
is designed to help prevent prolonged dilation of the sphincter, helping to minimize the risk of loss of sphincter tone. A small amount of seepage, with a little bit of oozing around the rectum, is expected. However, leakage is something you are going to want to troubleshoot. There are four general causes for leakage, which we will review now. 1. Lack of rectal tone. 2. Patients in critical care and on muscle relaxers. 3. Too much fluid in the balloon. And 4. The balloon moves deeper into the sphincter. First, a good sphincter tone is desired to keep the retention balloon inserted and minimize leakage. If sphincter tone is absent, the device may still be inserted, but the patient may experience leakage around the device. Next, patients in critical care and on muscle relaxers may experience leakage. This is because the rectum is a muscle, and if the muscle is relaxed for any reason, it may not have the desired amount of tone. Third, the more fluid inserted into the balloon, the narrower the opening of the main tube becomes. This makes the drainage of fecal matter more difficult, potentially leading to leakage. Finally, if the balloon moves into the rectum, out of proper position, this will allow stool to flow around the balloon and leak out. Also, any formed stool will cause blockage in the tube. If significant leakage occurs, for example, tablespoons of stool or a need to clean up the bed, gently tug on the catheter near the balloon and make sure it's in the correct position. The black line should be outside the patient's rectum. If leakage continues, check the irrigation port and flush the catheter with 45 milliliters of water. During irrigation, as the water travels up the balloon end of the catheter, it will dislodge anything that's formed. At this point, milk the tube again. If, after trying both of those options, leakage persists, then withdraw all the fluid from the balloon via the white inflation port. Then remove the device from the rectum. If reinserting the same device, rinse before reinsertion. Because it is not sterile, there's no need for a new device. At this point, refer back to the device insertion instruction. Since small amounts of moisture or seepage around the catheter can be anticipated, we recommend using an incontinence pad at all times. Patients with very weak sphincter muscles may not be able to hold the device in place and may experience increased leakage of stool. Now we'll review proper irrigation, maintenance, and removal of the device. If the silicone catheter becomes blocked with solid particles, it can be rinsed by filling the syringe with room temperature water, attaching the syringe to the blue irrigation medication port, and depressing the plunger. Take extra care to use the blue irrigation medication port only when irrigating. Ensure the syringe is not inadvertently attached to the white balloon inflation port marked less than or equal to 45 ml. This would lead to overinflation of the retention balloon and the device would not be irrigated as intended. Irrigation amounts may vary depending on the amount of solid particles. If the patient's condition allows, place the patient in the left lying side position with the hips flexed to facilitate solid particle flow into the catheter during the irrigation process. You should repeat the procedure as often as necessary to maintain proper functioning of the device. Flushing the device as described is an optional procedure for use only when needed to maintain the unobstructed flow of stool into the collection bag. Periodically, you may want to gently milk the catheter to facilitate the flow. If repeated flushing with water does not return the flow of stool through the catheter, the device should be inspected to ascertain that there is no external obstruction, in other words, pressure from a body part, piece of equipment, or resolution of diarrhea. If no source of obstruction of the device is detected, use of the device should be discontinued. The FlexiSeal FMS kit contains three collection bags. The closed-end collection bag helps prevent the spread of infections such as C. difficile. The collection bags have a charcoal filter and are designed to contain and lock in odor, similar to the material construction of the Convitec Ostomy Care pouches. FlexiSeal Signal FMS also has an elbow bag connector. The connector includes a hook that interfaces with the collection bag. Change collection bags as needed. 
Discard used bags according to institutional protocol disposal of medical waste. Observe the device frequently for obstructions from kinks, solid fecal particles, or external pressure. Before changing the collection bag, put on non-sterile gloves. To begin the bag changing process, rest the elbow bag connector on its side on a protective incontinence pad. Also make sure you have a replacement collection bag within close reach. Carefully unsnap the soiled pouch and securely snap the cap to the pouch to contain the stool. Snap the clean pouch to the elbow bag connector and position the unit to the location where gravity drainage has worked the best. There are three charcoal filter collection bags in each kit, and additional bags can be ordered separately as needed. Snap the cap onto each used bag and discard according to institutional protocol for disposal of medical waste. Observe the device regularly for obstructions from kinks, solid fecal particles, or external pressure. To remove the catheter from the rectum, reposition the patient in a left side lying position with hips flexed and deflate the retention balloon by attaching the syringe to the white inflation port and slowly withdraw all water from the balloon. Remember, the soft, flexible catheter is capable of collapsing to an 8 mm diameter. This ability to collapse to an 8 mm diameter helps ensure patient comfort during removal and helps to prevent prolonged dilation of the sphincter, helping minimize the risk of loss of sphincter tone. Attach the syringe to the white inflation port that is marked less than or equal to 45 ml and slowly withdraw all fluid from the retention balloon. Disconnect the syringe and discard according to your facility protocol. Hold the catheter as close to the patient as possible and slowly slide it out of the anus. Dispose of the device in accordance with your institutional protocol for disposal of medical waste. Here we'll review how to administer medication after the device has been inserted. FlexiSeal FMS devices have an approved claim for the administration of medication. Before getting started, you'll need to gather the syringe and cinch clamp provided in the kit packaging. The patient should be placed on the left side lying position with their hips flexed before administering medication. If this is not possible, you may determine an alternative position. To prepare the device for the administration of medication, the irrigation line must be flushed. Refer to the irrigation maintenance and removal of device of this video for instructions. Attach the supplied syringe and flush the irrigation line with 10 milliliters of water. Prepare a new syringe with the prescribed medication. Position the cinch clamp loosely on the catheter at the black indicator line. Connect the syringe to the blue irrigation medication port marked IRRIG slash RX and administer the medication. Clinicians should take extra care to use the blue irrigation medication port only when delivering medication. Do not administer medication through the white inflation port, marked less than or equal to 45 ml, as this would lead to overinflation of the retention balloon and the patient would not receive the medication as intended. To ensure the delivery of medication into the rectum, Immediately flush the irrigation line with at least 50 milliliters of water. Tighten the cinch clamp on the catheter to ensure no flow through the catheter. Ensure the second notch is engaged. Squeeze tightly using the forefinger and thumb of both hands to ensure a good seal. Allow the medication to dwell in the rectum for the desired amount of time as dictated by the prescribing physician. Next, remove the cinch clamp, attach a new syringe, not supplied, and flush the irrigation line with 10 milliliters of water. Dispose of the syringe according to institutional policy. Now we'll review proper sampling procedure. FlexiSeal FMS devices have a stool sampling port. In preparation for stool sampling, you'll need to obtain a lure slip tip syringe, also known as a catheter tip or TUMI syringe. This is not included in the device packaging. 
you'll also need an absorbent pad. It is recommended that you wear gloves during the sampling procedure. Before sampling, place the absorbent pad directly below the sampling port area. To collect a stool sample, locate the sample port on the catheter and open the sample port cap. Locate the lure slip type syringe and remove any residual air by depressing the plunger before inserting it into the sample port. You are now ready to collect your stool sample. Milk the catheter to ensure stool is pooled directly under the sample port. Once an adequate amount of stool has been pooled, press the tip of the syringe through the sampling port slit to access the interior of the catheter. Ensure the tip of the syringe has penetrated the sample port slit. Withdraw the syringe plunger to collect the stool sample. Remove the syringe and close the sampling port cap. Transfer the stool sample into a collection device per your institution's policy. Dispose of the stool sampling syringe according to your institution's policy.